Uh, creative edit series, my creative edit series. This is episode number six. We're going to take this image right here and turn it into this image right here. And at the end, I'm going to get rid of this helicopter. This is part of Luminar's uh, sky replacement, but I don't think I want the helicopter in here. But we'll get rid of that at the end. But I'll show you every step along the way that it took me to get here. So without any further ado, let's get editing. This is a Luminar Creative Edit, but I was having a little bit of issues. I was doing a sky replacement in Luminar, and it was having some trouble with these clouds. It was uh, These clouds were showing through, and I couldn't get rid of them. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to take this into Photoshop, run Topaz Mask AI on it. Uh, they have a new update now, and it's working a lot better, in my opinion. So I thought I'd just show you Mask AI, and then we'll go right into Luminar. So what I did was I duplicated my background layer, and now we're just going to come up to filter and down to topaz labs and we'll get mask ai right here and we'll launch that and we'll remove the sky it'll it'll go out pretty quick so they have this new feature in here uh, called auto detect sky so if you click that and they may have had that before i i'm not sure but and then they have this auto detect subject. You know, I think they had auto detect subjects and they added this auto detect sky. I'm pretty sure, not 100%, but I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 this is new. And it does a great job. So let's go ahead and just click compute mask. And real quickly, it will get rid of that sky. Okay, now let's just zoom in on the image here. It missed a little bit of this area right here. So what I'm going to do is get this uh, cut brush right here. I'm using my left bracket key just to make it smaller. And I'm just going to paint over this area right here. Maybe here and right here. See what that does. I should have had this on contrast. Some, it takes a little longer when you're in the uh, mask AI position here. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, Looks like it missed a little spot right here, or took a little too much off, so I'm going to get the keep brush and make it a little bit smaller and just paint right over here. I'll do another video. Yeah, see that brought that right back. Maybe, let's check that out right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, and I think that's good. There's a little bit of, you can see a little bit of white here. So what I'm going to do here is go to the edge and just uh, shift this edge to the left a little bit. Pull that edge in a little bit and you'll see it. See it starting to creep in there. Maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, that, that's looking pretty. Yeah, maybe a little more. Maybe right there. And let's just zoom around the image and see what we got. Yeah, I think that looks good. It's acceptable. I'm just going to go ahead and click apply and that'll bring us right back into Photoshop. Now what I'm going to do is, you can see right here that that, that sky is cut out right there. So what I'm going, going to do is, uh, under right under this layer 1 copy where I uh, removed the sky, I'm going to click layer 1 and put a blank layer here. Click this little plus right here. I'm going to do a shift delete, which is a fill command. I'm just going to put a white background here. And now I have this white sky. And now we can work in Luminar and do our creative edit. So the first thing I did was went into the creative tab here and went up to AI sky replacement. And right now that's shut off. So let me turn it on and show you what I did here. All right. So I found this sky. I just used a can sky that came with Luminar 4, uh, Sunset 4. As I said, there's a helicopter here, but I'm going to get rid of that later. And I'll show you how we do that with the erase tools. And... Um, didn't do anything with horizon blending or position. Uh, relit the scene to like a 45. Didn't touch sky global. Didn't touch closed gaps. Because like I said, I was having issues here with that sky. Because a lot of times when you have a sky in your image, sometimes Luminar, well, a lot of times Luminar has a little bit of issues uh, dealing with that, okay? So I went ahead, as I showed you earlier, we just... I used Topaz just to get rid of the sky and then came in here and used this. I mean, I could have replaced the sky in Photoshop too, but I enjoy working with this because you got all these features in here like atmospheric haze, which I bumped up to 61. 
And because you might say, well, Dave, why didn't you just replace this guy in Photoshop? Yeah, I could have, but it's so much easier here in Luminar with all these tools here. Okay. And the sky temperature, I left it where it was and I cut the sky exposure back a little bit because I thought it was a little bit too bright. But that's my sky replacement. And again, if you click right here where it says Sunset 4, this little drop down, here's all your skies in here, but I chose Sunset 4. Okay. So that was the first thing I did. Now, the second thing I did was. I always use this filter, went to the Essentials tab, and went to AI Enhance, and let me turn that on, and it just really just opens this image up, and it really does a beautiful job, and I went up to 33, you know, we could take it up further if we wanted to here, maybe, yeah, maybe let's take it up to 40, and then I used AI Sky Enhancer, let me shut that off so you can see what it did. So it just like darkens out the top a little bit and it's doing all kind of really cool things to that sky. But this artificial intelligence is really amazing. Truly amazing. Uh, then the next thing, another one of my favorites, I pretty much use it all the time, was AI Structure. Let's turn that on. And I just bumped that up to a 19, just added a little extra structure there. Not much. And that was that. And then uh, the last thing I did was went into the Pro tab here. Not much to get this picture looking really cool in Luminar 4. And hey, just use what you need. And when it gets where you like it, just stop. So now I went to the Pro tab. And inside here, I use Dodge and Burn. I love dodging and burning because it contours your image, almost makes it three-dimensional three dimensional at times, you know, just by, you know, accenting highlights and shadows. And it just really does a great job. So Dodge and Burn, let's click that on. And this is the before. And here is the after. Give it a second here to render. Okay, so isn't that cool? And then I took the overall amount and pulled that back. But what I'm going to do here is go ahead and reset this entire filter here and start from scratch because I want to show you how I dodge and burn in the different uh, tools inside of the dodge and burn uh, filter here or yeah or adjustments I should say okay so let's go ahead and reset this one and get it back to no dodging and burning and now I'll show you how I dodged and burned it now the dodging and burning I do love to dodge and burn this is where you get to really be an artist and really get in here and start painting around and just making this image become your own, and it's a lot of fun. So all you got to do is uh, click on the Dodge and Burn uh, tool. It opens up, and click on Start Painting. Now, you have two modes in here. You have Lighten, and you have Darken. I'm going to start out with Lightening. You can start out either way you want, and you can also erase if you went too far. But Lighten and Darken, and I usually like to start out with um, Lighten. Right now it's at 8%, and I could change this. I like to start out with a lower number and build it up slowly because you can keep painting over and over and it'll get it lighter and lighter and lighter. So my recommendation is start out with a lower number, like 15% or lower. And uh, I don't want to go too crazy on this dodging and burning, but I just want to accent some of these highlight areas here. Now you can use your left and right bracket key to make your brush larger or smaller here. Okay. So I'm going to make it around that size right there. And I'm just looking for light areas like right in here. And I'm just going to paint over them. I can paint over it a couple times if I want. But I'm just looking for light, lighter areas here. Now I can come and make my brush smaller and hit some of these little areas over in here. Okay. And again, you can go over them a couple times if you need to. And... It's a nice somber scene. That's a good word, I think. Somber. And so I don't want to go too crazy because it's, you know, was it morning or evening? I don't know. This is a stock image, and I'll leave this image in the link below so you can uh, follow along with me. So I'm just looking for areas that I just like to lighten up a little bit. Again, more for artistic purposes than anything. You know, again, just to kind of contour it and make it have some more interest. And maybe come across here, maybe back in here, and just have fun with this, you know? Get your favorite beverage out and uh, play. And again, vary your brush size as you go. I'm going to maybe get some of this up in here just a little bit. 
maybe right across here. Let's bring some of this out. Okay, maybe over in there. That's looking pretty good. Now let's move on. Well, let me get some stuff down in here. Just have fun with this. Okay, something like that. And take your time and do it right now. I would spend a lot more time in here and I'd have some good music on and just really have a lot of fun. So let me click darken here. Now my darken's at 7%. So now again, I'm just looking for areas that I can darken up a little bit. Just to make this image look more interesting. Maybe in there a little bit. And again, we can vary our size. I'm going to come up to some of this stuff up in here. On this mountain up here. I don't know where this is. If you know where it's at, let me know. I'd like to know. I don't get out that much to travel, so. Okay. I'm going to go back and do a little more uh, dodging. Because I'm going to work in this waterfall here a little bit. I think that'll really be nice. And again, we're just looking for some shadow areas here. And don't forget at the end, we have the overall amount slider we can pull back if we went too far. And I generally will go too far. It's just the nature of me. So I'm sure I'm not the only one with that issue. But don't forget, we have all these different uh, adjustments that we can work with. Maybe in here a little bit. And again, take your time and and do it right. I'm not going to go too crazy here. Again, I would spend a lot more time in the actual edit here. Maybe just right up in here a little bit. But isn't that really cool what you can do? But you get the idea. You get my drift, what I'm doing, right? Okay, so now let's go back to lightning. You can just keep switching back and forth. Let's go to lightning. Let's work on this waterfall. Where's my percent at? 12%. I might just pull this back a little bit more. Make my brush a little bigger. Not much right there. And just... You know, let's accent some of these pieces of water. Pieces of water, is that such a thing? But let's just make this water look really fun. Just have some fun with it. Maybe down in here a little bit. Maybe get some of these little um, turbulent areas right in here. And maybe like back here across here, maybe just run my brush across, Woo, like so. Maybe hit that one more time and lighten that up a little bit. There's a dark streak through here. Let me go back to darken. I'm at 7%. And let me just run, run that across there like that. That's looking pretty cool. And again, keep just keep working on it. Take your time. And then when you're done with it and you're satisfied, just click done right here. And then you can click on this little toggle and see here's the before and here's the after. And again, if you felt you went too far, just take this amount slider and start to pull it back. I usually like to take it the whole way back and then just build it up slowly. And, you know, maybe somewhere right around in there. Now let's click this one more time. There's a before. And there's the after, so that's a lot of fun. Now the last thing I want to do is get rid of this helicopter, and I'll show you how to do that. So come up here to these icons, the pencil and the ruler, which is your canvas tools inside of here. So click that and click on Erase, and you'll notice once this prepares itself, you have a size adjustment and an Erase button right here. Uh, and you can vary your size with your left and right bracket key. I'm going to go with the smallest size here, and I'm just going to paint right over this little helicopter right here and click Erase. And that's pretty much it. There's a little bit of residue right here, so let me hit that one more time and click Erase. Let's try this again. Come across here one more time, Erase. Yeah, that looks better. Happy with that. And then what we can do is click Done. And that'll bake that into this particular layer here. And let's come back to our layers. And you can see there's that erase layer. So if I give this a click, here's the helicopter. And here it is 
with the erased helicopter. Now comes the fun part. We can either click on the split screen here and see the before and after results. Pretty dramatic, pretty amazing for like what? Maybe uh, three or four filters or, to or tools. Pretty cool. Let's click this and now let's click the eyeball. There's the before and there's the after. And I always like to uh, just type your F key and that puts you into what I call presentation mode so you can really study your piece and see if you're totally happy with it. And if you're not, you just keep on editing. Now I'm working in Luminar for today as a standalone uh, product. So I can just close out Luminar and all my edits. Uh, the recipe for all the edits is right there uh, with the image. Okay. So when I open it back up, if I decide I want to uh, make a print or put it online, I can export it or do whatever I need to do. And that is it. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this episode today. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and give it a share with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. 